Marcus Epps got hurt uh, last week. We saw Isaiah Pulumayo came in and, and played some significant snaps down the stretch. Uh, what do you thought of his performance, not just on Sunday, but his overall development the last few years? Since we got Isaiah, the thing that stood out about him is his work ethic and his ability to work on his um, what would perceived weaknesses or the things that he need to work on. You know, since he was a rookie, yeah. I'm really proud about how he's you know gotten better at that. You can see it from him, the range in the back, deep part of the field, his man-to-man -man cover skills have improved, his tackling has improved overall, and just in terms of how he strikes and the physicality in which he plays, it's all like you know, night and day from when we first got him. So that's a testament to his hard work. So really proud of him. And he has a unique build. I mean, six four or so with a longer safety. Does that kind of give you more freedom as a defense coordinator and how you able to use him? You know, well, on defense, you, the idea you see like you see the top defenses over time in the league. You know, you're dealing with men that can run, men who are physical, who are having to be long. You know, long levers, whether it's legs, arms, big people. It's a, it's a big man sport. So that's always that's always a positive. Patrick, the performance of that defense is not indicative of what they have done. Can, can you put your finger on what happened? The beauty of our league is it starts each week is brand new. Each week's brand new. And it doesn't matter what you did before or after, it's just you're just dealing in the present. And Sometimes it goes your way, sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes we play to the standards, sometimes we don't. Sometimes, a lot of times, it's more, more than likely it's, the coach, it's us messing up, or me as the coach. So the, the big thing is, you know, thankfully we have, you know, 14 more opportunities. Uh, this week we'll start with the first one, and that's against Cleveland. And I know this, the players, the coaches, we're all here working dil diligently to get to improve, you know, get better each day and put our best foot forward for Sunday. Obviously, this is Mike Isaiah um, talking about a guy that does all the right things. He's ready when he's called upon. You know, the times that he gets to the game, he does well. How different is it to do that than then to be called into a, an expanded role like he could potentially be? Uh, you got you got to make the most of your opportunity. Stay ready. You know, so you, or I, I, I'm bad with saying, so bear with me. Be ready. Stay ready, so you don't have to get ready. Something, whatever that that deal is. I mean, I'm terrible with saying, but I'm, I'm bad. <laughs> so, but. The idea is to make sure you take advantage of any opportunity given to yourself. Like, unfortunately, you know, missing Epps is going to be tough. You know, he's one of our leaders, great football player, great man. But you got to be willing. To, you got to be ready to step into a role. And if it expands, it expands. But a lot of times, you earn that uh, through your play and practice. Coach, obviously, it's the NFL, so you're facing NFL level competition every mm -hmm. week. But with the Browns' offensive line being so banged up, how much of an emphasis are you really putting on the defensive line, you know, from start to finish, mm -hmm. immediately after? Well, it starts with the league is about the people. So anytime you line up, whether I'm a defensive lineman, whether I'm a cornerback, a safety, you want to know who's in front of you. So with the moving pieces, that's the first thing, first and foremost. We got to know, know who's in front of us. So there's definitely, you know, some juggling that around and making sure we know who the people they're going to deploy out there and get to know them a little bit more. But in terms of strategy, you might force some more communication on the O line, you know, through different things. But you know, they practice too. They, they, they know their situation, just like every other, all the other 31 teams are dealing with it. But the key is to make sure any time you line up out there on the field, you want to know who's across from you. So just trying to figure out who are the people, who the people are going to be, that's probably the biggest thing. What did you see from uh, Tyree last week there? What's the next step for him in his development? Uh, next step, you know, just what you're looking for from a defensive end is physicality. Just physicality. And then from there, you know, th again, if you're wrong, be physical. Be physical. Then, really, the defensive lineman for me, when I, when I talk to those guys, is are your eyes right? So you know, get your get your eyes in the right place so you can read your key. Because on, in this league right now, just like in college, how they're blocking the edge players, you know, to say, okay, the guy I'm lined up across from me is going to single block me. I mean, how often does that happen in the game? A lot of times, it's gear release. It's okay. Here comes the tight end. He's motioning over. They're crack blocking you. You know. Gear release, they're flashing somebody back behind for you. So if their eyes are in the wrong place, and a lot of younger players, their eyes can get a little, uh, you know, out of whack sometimes. That, that's the biggest focus right there for me, talking to the young players. Has he got those two? Absolutely. Yeah, that, that comes from repetition. That comes from repetition. Get your eyes in the right place. You know, make sure your hands are in front of your eyes. You know, I, I, I say this. I do have this thing now because I say it to my players. 
you know, you get you gain precision through vision. So if your eyes are in the right place, you can be more precise with your hands. So that, that's a big focal point for us. It's always been one for me being a past D line coach. So that's big for me. You see with Masterson also step up into the role and he came into this team undrafted free agent. Was mm -hmm. what kind of growth and progression have you seen out of him and his confidence level as well for you? Luke's always been a confident player. Going back to his Wake Forest days, I knew his coach from Wake Forest, uh, playing the safety position, transitioning here to linebacker. And like a lot of young second and third level uh, defensive players, talking about you know, the secondary and the linebackers, he gained that confidence and experience from playing special teams. That's why it's such a vital role in any roster. As you develop the roster for the now and for the future, those young players embracing their role on special teams, learning how to play NFL football, and then you're able to grow from there because those are the guys that are going to become your starters someday. But and that's that's all about roster development. We do a good job here, and you know Tom does a great job of getting those guys ready. I mean, I don't know how often you guys talk to Tom, but you sit in Tom's meeting is is really really fun to watch a teacher like that work and teach these guys how to play football, and it all transfers over there to defense, whether it's tackling, using your hands, so. Tom does a great job of developing those guys and makes it easier for us when we get them. And however it turns out, whether they mature into the role or they're forced from injuries, it makes it a lot easier. But Luke is a hardworking individual, smart, uh, doesn't say much, but on the field he's talking and you know he, he's a good man, good man. Will you talk about your linebacker position behind the divine please? Mm -hmm. In terms of just the guys that you have, their development, maturation, and their uh, thoughts. You know, on the, the thing that you know it stood out before with um, with AP and now now with uh, Mike uh, coaching those guys, becoming NFL linebackers in terms of communication. That's that's key to me. That's key to me. You go out there, you're in the middle of the defense. Can you talk to everybody? Can you play with anticipation? Can you call out the tendencies that we talked about? and get that communicated to the players. Can you help the player that might need a little help? Hey, you're doing this, you're doing that, and control the front. So to see those guys embrace that, that's why the beauty of having two guys that play the position. I can sit there and say it, but I'm talking about I was on the remote. I mean, my hand was in the dirt, but most of the time I was on the bench getting water for the other, other guys, so <laughs> it's always good. Let's do uh, one more, uh, two more, Myra and Vic. Coach, with uh, Max Crosby allegedly dealing with an injury there, how much does that affect the energy on the defense when uh, watching him, you know, off to the sidelines, kind of bent over a little bit and stuff, and staying, having, you, go ahead, Coach. You know, head coach talks about injuries, so, but Max, Max has energy no matter what's going on, so that's all I can say on Max, you know, Max is Max, is Max so, but head coach talks about injuries. What does Joe Selby watch uh, Marty Cooper on the uh, film? <laughs> really good player, really good player. They utilize him in uh, key situations. The ability to catch the ball in traffic, he's fast. Um, they can move him in different spots. Uh, the quarterback trusts him in those critical situations. Still a dynamic player in this league. You know, he's proven it for a long time. And, you know, fun to get to go against that type of competition. I'm sure guys are excited about it. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.